Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 185 and we have a good one for you today. Today's Fish Friday is actually not about a fish at all, but might answer some questions or at least clarify what some people may have already thought. I was speaking with someone in the public today in regards to my job and they asked a very simple question. That is actually incredibly complex. And the question that we're gonna to answer today on this video, how do fish survive droughts? Now it's no secret if you're in Texas, a lot of the state is actually in severe, severe drought. Um, and it has been for some time. And knowing how fish survive droughts is actually important just but right now knowing how these fish are going to survive and for the future because of climate change i don't really want to say global warming and this is definitely not any sort of political stance or debate or you know whatever that's a whole different topic but one thing that is unrefutable by anyone is that climate variability is 100% on the rise. We are having more significant floods and more severe droughts than we ever have in human history. That is fact. So let's talk about the climate variability part, about these droughts being so severe and happening a little more frequently and these floods can happen. But we'll talk about floods at a later date, maybe. I don't know. So how do fish survive droughts? Well, depends on the species, of course. Um, we've talked about numerous ways that some fish have survived droughts. Um, one of the most bizarre ones that a lot of people have told me is actually, um, it's actually, hold on, here, the lungfish. Um, so the lungfish are not the only fish that do this, but they go into a form of estivation or a sort of fish burrowing. Um, some fish just bury in the mud and pray that the mud doesn't, you know, dr completely dry out and they kind of survive for these very short dry periods. Um, they just create burrows, they seek refuge, and they just re reduce their exposure. Um, some fish just do that. The lungfish kind of take it a step further and do what is called uh, estivation. They just basically put themselves in a state of dormancy, um, kind of like hibernation. Think of it as fish hibernation. Um, that they'll slow down their metabolic processes, conserve energy, and basically just sit there. And lungfish in particular help themselves by actually making a sort of mucus cocoon that helps hold the humidity and moisture in and essentially they hang out in this mucus cocoon until a rain uh, comes up and it re um, hydrates the soil makes another pond and then the lungfish can you know survive from there they're not the only fish that estivates and not all estivating fish make mud or mucus cocoons but this the lungfish is just very adapted to um, these wet and dry cycles. A lot of African species of fish are very, they evolved, their evolutionary time period has res basically revolved around periods of dry and then monsoons. Um, there's, n there's no secret in that. So the lungfish is just a really good like i said you know you got the burrowing they're just trying to support uh survive like kind of shorter time periods like a dry season whereas a lungfish can hang out for i believe somewhere in the order of years not you know weeks so you know this is really neat now but what about other fish that we really haven't talked about dry periods well, quite simply, a lot migrate. Um, if you want to call it migrating, reservoir species of fish, spe uh, fish that are evolved around ponds, lakes, and things like that, they just go deeper. Um, they just follow the dropping water line and eventually it just gets to the point that they can't go anymore and unfortunately they just kind of die. Now, 
stream and river fish are a little bit different. Um, stream and river fish have uh, go to what well, <laughs> I'm trying to think how to put this in the term we call them refugia pools. Um, so essentially you have a river that has the riffle run and pool well even in the riffle run and pool sequence you'll have deeper pools and so the pools will actually hold water a lot longer even if the riffles and the runs go dry so you think about a river that has gone dry usually you'll find pockets of water and i'm not talking about like a thin film of water i'm talking about a decent pool usually where all these people like to go swimming um, that is, you know, nice deep pool and a nice clean river. That's actually a very important habitat feature for fish because in times of severe drought, these fish species will migrate into these refugia pool and kind of go with the reservoir. They'll compete with each other and, you know, you're not going to have the same biomass you would have in a river but you're you you're going to have at least a few specimens of each species that seem that make it through the dry period of course as time goes on the refugia pool um, goes down then of course you can have some more issues about oxygen problems and things like that and that's where a lot of fish not just some but a lot of fish actually adjust their metabolic rates and to cope with reduced oxygen um, levels in stagnant or shallow water and this is something we've talked about numerous times over the channel the species that are evolved in very stagnant or uh, waters usually very oxygen deprived systems um, but however those are usually uh, more of a they have adapted certain mechanisms to allow them to be air breathers you know we know about lungfish where they have the adaptation where they have that specialized lung that allows them to breathe there during drought on the sore time they'll gulp air help with oxygen intake but we've also talked about gar which are facultative or obligatory air breathers um which was really neat those are the ones that have labyrinth organs or modified gills that allow them to actually take oxygen from the air that also helps them survive in oxygen deprived water this, these are going these are going to be things like your grommies and things like that those are the ones that are really kind of particular but grommies have evolved to basically stay in that sort of very oxygen deprived system over long term that's where they live versus you know things like the texas rivers and streams where these fish are not really adapted to be air breathers so they'll just kind of slow their metabolic rates and just basically put themselves in a little bit of dormancy saying i'm really stressed let's reduce our body's need for calories let's just keep it going and we'll just try and make it through this hard time right now um, and they do that very well fish can survive through a lot more than a lot of people think now one thing that is not really talked about too much is some just leave you know we have talked about one uh, species of fish the walking catfish there's another one the climbing perch basically they just leave so if the ground is wet they'll just try and find and they know that their water level is leaving they will potentially just go and try and find other waters and they can move quite a good distance and especially if the water's wet if it's like you gotta you know that those weird rain spells right in the middle of summer or drought that keeps like the ground wet for a day those are perfect for that the water levels drop and they get a rainstorm makes everything nice and wet and muddy that's where these fish will thrive they'll try and go to these other ponds and spread out and just try and find a different body of water and they don't just do that during drought times they'll also just kind of do that because that's what they do but in drought times i feel that they specifically get a little more active and mobile trying to find better bodies of water um but now for sort of for the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on and i hope this has all been interesting or at least very much at least informative is how this 
kind of final category handles it. Some have evolved with extreme droughts and don't. The adult fish just don't deal with the drought. They're fine with it. They just don't deal with it. And the best example I can give of this is annual killifish. Annual killifish are some of the most beautiful, beautiful species of fish in the world. Their colors are just mind-blowing and are on par with any any fish out there. Um, and there's thousands, I don't know about thousands, there's a ton of species. Um, and the annual killifish are really the ones that I'm more familiar with are the ones from Africa, which, you know, we talked about the African lungfish going through those times of severe droughts and monsoons. Well, the annual killifish do, they have to adapt to those same things. However, they said, okay, well, we're not going to be an adult and try and survive from this. That's way too hard. So what they do is they just lay eggs. And their eggs will actually get stuck in the mud and go through kind of like the egg version of estivation. Um, the eggs will just sit in the mud. They'll kind of dry up and just basically be dormant. They just won't activate or won't hatch or anything. And they'll just lay in the um, mud. And I believe it's at least as there's like, if as long as there is some sort of moisture that it doesn't remove like 100% of the water content of the mud, these fish do just fine for a long time. And these fish are actually very popular in the aquarium trade with a certain select number of individuals. Some people grab these and they're like, oh, well, my fish was had it and then it died, you know, a little bit later. Well, that's because the people that know about these fish are just enthralled because of their life cycle. Because when the rainy season comes, they hatch and repopulate. But the time period that they do it, they will hatch, mature, breed, and then die or be ready to die extremely quickly. Sometimes within a few weeks. This right here is a diagram of this same species right here. So this is three to four weeks. Three to four weeks after hatching. This is six to eight. It is now a sexually mature adult. These 16 to 18s, these are the big bad boys that are surviving and they're just laying eggs all the time. But they're able to start laying eggs in six to eight weeks. Meaning that they only need six weeks seven weeks of water so i really want you to think about that you have a body of water or a water body a creek a stream or whatever it's dry it is dry 10 months out of the year this fish as long as all the water qualities and everything's go on this fish would be perfectly adapted to that to have water for seven weeks oh it's happy it has gone with a life and that's where i'm saying this is just like some fish decided we're not going to deal with it they're fine with it they're fine with the drought we'll just move on we'll just have our eggs and they'll grow they'll hatch they'll mature they'll lay more eggs and then die it seems a little sad a little quick but that's what they're adapted for and it, that's why I really like them in the aquarium for people that know what they're doing to try and simulate that sort of cycle. You can buy these eggs. They're not that uncommon for the people that know and know what they want. Um, they'll buy the egg parts and hatch them from eggs to go through the cycle themselves. It's a truly bizarre adaptation to drought. And quite frankly, my favorite adaptation to drought to just basically say hey we only got water for a very short time we don't want to be adults we'll just make sure we got eggs and then let's move on but thank you guys so much for the, um oh my goodness 
Thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If you'd like to support the channel, please click the link down below. It is by no means expected, but very much appreciated. Regardless, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and peace.